But I think film is the uh, culmination of all art forms, painting, dance, literature, music. When people talk about Leonardo da Vinci and when they talk about Jackson Pollock, they will also mention Jean-Michel Basquiat. When I first met him, just a few months short of 16, he was living on the street, staying with God knows who. The streets are so intimate. You could just sit on a bench and meet somebody. You could spend the whole day with you didn't even know who they were. And there's nothing more powerful than sitting in a in a, in a dark room with a lot of other people all going through the same experience. And experiencing things differently. So for those hour and a half, two hours, you're, you're in the world that the director has made and created. Well, seeing Cassavetti's uh, Woman Under the Influence, um, I was studying classics. I was studying in Athens in Greece, and I went and saw that Cassavetti's film, and um, and I had never really experienced a film where you're so emotionally involved with the character. And I remember thinking, oh, don't tell her that now. You know, tell her you love her now. Oh no, don't say. You know, and 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 it was such an emotional experience. Um, and so that was that was very huge for me. And my, my mother used to drop me off at the Carnegie Cinema when she was doing business in New York City because she thought I would learn French by watching French New Wave films. And, um, and all I did was, I was about nine or 10, and all I did was get kind of confused about sex and I didn't learn any French, but <laughs> I was lucky to have that exposure to, to, to those films. I love things having to do with shadow and light. I think Jacques Turner and, that, and the whole Val Luton was a huge thing for me, both growing up and in my adult. Uh, uh, you know, that, I, I emulate um, that kind of use of shadow and light that because out of, they did it because of low budget, that they couldn't afford. Like if they, if they made a staircase in, a, in their movies, they would borrow the staircase from Gone with the Wind, but they were only given four stairs. So the rest would disappear into the shadow. Um, so I, I, that was very stimulating to me. And also, I really love going to see paintings. And the whole surrealist, the French surrealists, I think, have a huge, huge effect on me. And Buñuel, and also reading his, um, his autobiography, The Last Sigh. Um, I'm very, you know, I love the idea of, which is a surrealist idea, of, of things being grounded in reality. And then you can go anywhere, like Tarkovsky or Rivet. Um, I had wanted to be an archaeologist most of my life, and I think actually my film Boom for Real, you can almost feel the di director having kind of an archaeological um, love of, of digging things up and finding treasures um, and uh, thinking about an, an older a world that doesn't exist anymore. Um, and then when I was in Greece and I saw that Cassavetes film and I was actually working with an experimental theater company in Greece as well as studying classics, um, I, I, and I, and, and then I, and then I worked an off, off Broadway in New York and I, I got really sick of the proscenium, of being stuck in the proscenium. And, um, and that really made me think about making films and, and telling stories. I've always loved telling stories. And I think archaeology too, you're a storyteller. You know, when you find things you have to put together how these ancient cultures existed, um, and have imagination. I'm driven by the story. Um, I think it's very interesting. I find that when you, when you, the germ of your original idea, if your film, when you finish it, goes back to that original idea, often you can be sure that it's strong. Um, and um, you know, and I had for Boom for Real, I had the original idea of showing a, a picture of New, of Jean-Michel Basquiat as well as a picture of New York at that time. And I feel like I succeeded that in that with that film. You know, I hope that people see them in the theater. I mean, I make my film, I don't think about people sitting the, in front of the computer. I, I hope that it's a shared experience. I mean, I've, um, you know, being that Boom For Real is my most recent experience with an audience, it's been so satisfying for me to have young people come up to me at the end and say, how can we have a community? How can we get our art out? 
how you know and 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 instigating inspiring people to to make their own art and to to also um and i think i i like the idea of instigating the imagination as much as possible you know i think that's one of our great gifts as humans um so i think my my films are for an audience that's willing to be instigated <laughs> Buñuel, all of his archive is in the uh, Filmoteca in, in, in Madrid. And it's so great. It's open for anybody to go read his letters, to go to look at his notes on his scripts. I mean, to look at a director's shooting script could be very, can be very helpful for people who want to make movies. Um, I, I, and I think having also, you know, I think film... It, because it's such a powerful medium, it's also been so responsible for changing our culture in many ways. And so to be able to track that through cinema um, is, is, is critical and important. And I worry about all these films being shot on digital. And I try to tell people who are making films now to, um, to make sure that they put in their budget a transfer onto film, because that's the only true archival medium. And otherwise their work will get lost. And they're constantly changing the formats and things like that, where you don't have machines to show like HD cam anymore. You don't have, so um, uh, I think it's I think it's very critical to to keep film on film, and for people to be aware that that your film will disappear if you don't, because the only archival is a print. I think in order to keep cinema alive. We need to have these kind of precious theaters in our educational environments. And, um, and seeing movies in the movie theater is just a very different experience than watching them on DVD and being separated uh, and not, not having a dialogue with other people around you about the films. Um, and I think it's a great gift to have a Cinematheque in a university. Um, and that it, I understand it's free. so. And, and that's wonderful, too, to give to the students, because it, it's a different experience seeing films with people, other people. Um, and, you know, we've been so separated in our society by the Internet and by iPhones and all these new ways of communicating that we're communicating less. And we need to communicate more in order to, and I think having dialogue about cinema, seeing movies together, having cine clubs, I think... You know, that keeps things progressing. And also there's, I noticed there's sort of a new cinema language starting to emerge in young cinema. And I think that's really exciting because that's something that always interested me was how can you tell a, how can you tell a story cinematically in a new way? How can you reinvent it and look and, and, and the, this, this medium? Which has been, if you start with silent films, it's been changing and evolving all along. And I think for a period of time, we were sort of stuck. And now it seems like there's some other, because of, uh, there's a different speed that young people go through their lives and deal with uh, media, media and, st media and stuff, um, that, uh, that, 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 that that's, that's now coming into the films. <laughs>